Hey, nerds! It's Geeks of Cascadia. Geeks of Cascadia. Geeks of Cascadia. Exclusive tabletop game podcast for the uh, Pacific Northwest. All levels of gamers. Analog gaming. Tabletop news. Dungeons and Dragons. Stupid. Mindless bad. There will definitely be some bet. That's probably our best. A lot that, of that's, that's, our, that's our best feature. Hey, geeks. Blue Samurai here, and I am with Rebeculous and. And I'm still that guy. And it is episode 50. 50. What up? Woo! Yeah. 50. Fireworks. That's it's right. Golden Jubilee. All right. You're going to put yeah. that in there? Yeah, we'll see if I have okay. that. Okay. <laughs> here we should um, all look up as if the confetti yeah, so yeah. is falling. Yeah, falling on yeah. us. Awesome. This is great. Wow. Wow. Yeah, wow. I'll catch it. Uh, with my mouth like this. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> it's uh, we've got a great show uh, for you. We've got Steve Jackson, like the Steve Jackson Who's of Steve Jackson Games. Steve Jackson Games? Yes. Oh, that's Steve Jackson. That's no, that Steve was the other Jackson. Steve Jackson, the minor league baseball and, uh, No. Okay. No, it'd be a t- that's our different podcast. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Hot Stove Leagues with Paul and Steve and Rebecca. That's right. Check it now on right. Google it. Wherever They'll, you buy your podcast. That's right. It won't come up no. at all. But I want to thank Greg Pratt for getting that interview done. So thank you, Greg, for um, cornering Steve Jackson and then tying him to a chair and forcing him to talk to you. Is that how you. he did it? No wonder yes. my that's interviews. That's the only that's way. That's what he always that does. That's the only way we can Great. get the interviews. You want me to come closer? No, I do want you to come <laughs> yes. closer to me. Yeah, actually talk to the microphone. <laughs> we also have a great uh, game review of a game I can't pronounce. So Topiary? That's right. It's a hard word. The hard, the hard words are hard. It is. Topiary. Topiary. We should just let him try and pronounce it first. <laughs> I would have simply not have said anything. <laughs> In fact, I'm looking kind of, it up kind of right like now. <laughs> Who makes topiaries? Uh, it is designers. Gardeners. Denny Devine. Oh, that's uh, the Fever Games, ever. looks like. That's the publisher, Fever Games. There's a little dinosaur on there. Cool. Wow. On the dinosaurs. cover. Yeah. I, I don't know if it has anything. Play that. I wonder if there's like scissors inside for everybody and there you do be. your own little topiaries. I. I don't there's know. Like there's shrubbery. little tiles. Maybe it's like bonsai. Maybe. Do you do bonsai? I, I, why, why would you I ask know. me Some that? Some people do that to calm down. You have oh, okay. a very stressful no. job. No, well, mm. I should. <laughs> <laughs> I should. You'd lop the whole thing. But off. you know what calms me down? Is doing cons. Yes. So what's going on with cons? Con news. Or nice segue, by the Other wow. things that we have going on. You're yes. I'm going really to be very loose with what I refer to as con news uh, in the near future. Because in, um, loose. yes, loosely defined, loose, they, loose fun, ball. nerdy things going on in the Pacific Northwest is what the segment is called now. That's too jovial for you. Bring it for down that. a little. It's <laughs> okay. a little too happy. Well, we have uh, June 22nd in Snohomish, Washington. We've got Mischief and Magic Brew Night. It looks really super fun. Um, it's local brews, and it's like uh, Harry Potter themed. And their mm-hmm. Facebook page has... Um, Grab your wands, hop on your broom, and immerse yourself in a night of magic, music, dinner, dancing, and local brews. Entertainment includes live performances by Kirby Grackle, Alchemical Ro- Romance, nice. and DJ Phoenix at 6.30. Is there butter beer? Um, magically themed drinks are available to purchase on site, as well as beer from our favorite local breweries, Lost Canoe and Sound to Summit. Um, all alcohol, this is 21 and over only, please. Um, all alcohol proceeds go directly to the Snohomish Senior Center, a nonprofit organization. Oh, that's nice. Yes, it's, it's totally awesome. And again, that is June twenty second in Monroe, Washington. No, sorry, Snohomish, Washington. Sorry about that, Snohomish. And it's called Mischief and Magic Brew Night. Search that on Facebook. You're gonna send people to Monroe, wondering where the <laughs> yeah, heck no, it is. Too. Yes, I get Still confused Paul sometimes. Still, Paul said it was in Monroe. Still, Paul said it was in Monroe, and it's not. It's in Snohomish. Um, we also have coming up. Also not a con, Oregon Renaissance Fair. That is um, on June 8th and 9th and June 15th and 16th in Canby, Oregon. Um, it's um, uh, looks Jousting like it looks, and pickles. There's, there's jousting, there's pickles, there's eating. There's and jousting with pickles. Jousting with pickles. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Sounds awesome. Also, one of my favorite people and performers, so many jokes there. Lynx the Animator. Ah. This is the guy I actually know. He's been in my house. Oh. He, um, he's a magician, sword swallower, 
Yeah, um, giant scissors swallower. Yes, totally also. cool. Apparently, um, according I, to the picture, I, I might be able to get that up on the YouTube. I think you should. Um, but um, the, the Link show is a unique blend of magic, sword swallowing, and comedy. Lynx is a veteran when it comes to performing at Renaissance festivals across the country. Not only is there audience interaction and participation, but a strong positive message at the end. From death-defying feats to amazement to be- bewildering moments that just can't be explained. Lynx is hilarious. Why and was he magic- in your house? Um, because we met him, and he was, and he was traveling doing his show. Yeah. We, met, we met him when we were in Denver. He did a great show at um, oh, mm-hmm. the Tower, I think it's called, where he makes a... Um, cantaloupe disappear a cantaloupe the size of your head he makes just disappear and i was like what do you mean he eats it yeah no. he's like he's like, he's like three feet i'm like three feet from the magician i can see everything he does plus i'm recording it and he just makes this amongst other things he makes this thing disappear and it's like i have watched this trick or illusion we should say at least 50 times and i cannot tell when it disappears let alone how it disappears Anyway, if you're at any sort of Renaissance mm. festival and you get a chance to link the animator, do that. Hmm. Wow, that was quite a glowing review. And he's hilarious. Also coming up, we have in Port Townsend, Washington, um, June 7th through 9th. So if you can't go to that one, go to this one, Brass Screw Confederacy. It is um, a um, steampunk festival. Oh, okay. Oh, is that which what is they're pretty cool. Oh, that's right. Rebecca's going to that one. Rebecca's going to that. That's yeah, right. she's going to interview all the people mm-hmm. and all, their, all the good. things. That's good. Excellent. Port Townsend. Um, I can't pull the way out there by myself. Well, you could take somebody with you. Yeah, take okay. somebody with you. still pull. You <laughs> Yay, I'll just take that weekend off. Um, steampunk festival sounds really fun. Um, they've got events like a prof- Professor Elemental's Pops into Linda's special flair to the weekend festivities. Um, Ooh, an a, a, a augmented reality show. with Dr. Gord Gord Yes. Gord Dr. And, G. And they've also the Bodger's Grand Exhibition. So that sounds like a whole lot of fun. Also coming up, we have This is where you If you can't go to right. either of those things, we've got the Kitsap Medieval Fair in Bremerton, Washington on Ooh. June 8th. It's the same weekend. There's a lot going on that weekend um, locally. And um, there's not a whole lot of information on their website, but it's a one more medieval fair. I'm sure it's fun. It's kind of your theme today. Mm-hmm. With it the is. Yeah, well, there's that, that's what's going on in June outside. Do they have jousting and pickles? Uh, let's see. Or pickle yeah, jousting. jousting. I like the pickle jousting, jousting idea. And if you Renaissance organizers out there should they've got really medieval war that, reenactments, a whole new which sounds really cool. Oh, they've got a whole great big melee battle. Oh, they do. okay. So lots of fun. Roll for initiative. That's right. <laughs> yes. Is there actual, like, death? I think they die. try not to actually kill each other because oh. I think that might be illegal. Mm. Also coming up, which is very important to hey, us. Hey, what's that? What's that? That is in August. No, go away, pop-up window. Um, Dragonflight Game Con 40, August 16th through 18th at the Bellevue oh. Hilton. Very 40, really? Yep. 40. Yep. Wow. They've been doing this a long time. We'll be there. I we booked, will I booked all be room. there. Did you book your room? I Who's did. I? I did. Eventually. Executive. I did not book my room. I'm just going to crash on one of your floors. No. Sure. Oh, okay. Oh, it's happening. <laughs> so I did mine online and had no problems. How did it work for you making a phone call like a caveman? I finally got through, <laughs> and I finally got my room, so I'm very happy. <laughs> okay, that's great. I'm yes. happy for you. Yes. Other than that, speaking of the Bellevue Hilton, there's this other thing that goes on there. Um, it's called OrcaCon. That's coming up January, yes. just around the corner. Sorry, we didn't react well. That we should oh, OrcaCon! Like, like wow, Orca-Con? I like OrcaCon. It's great. I like orcas. <laughs> orcas, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and that is um, January of tenth through twelfth. And boy, the web page just went down. Yeah. Anyway, tabletop gaming tabletop three days. Gaming. Gosh, I'm so sorry. Totally I'm not cool. bored. This looks awful. I had the on. So, mm-hmm. uh, um, we're still in. Um, Early bird fa- early bird rates. Okay. And we're still Great. worried about selling out mm-hmm. before the con happens. So it's a really good idea to get your um, registration now. Okay. Um, I'm just going to put this in there. I know it's not a Pacific Northwest con, but they are 
they're headquartered here. It's also that pretty makes important. It a Northwest Con. Oh well, there you go. Well, I'm talking about Gen Con. Gen Con is, is which that, is, is that the one with the Jennifers again that we talked last week? No, it is not. It's um, we can go a long eyes. story about that. We we actually uh, interviewed some of the uh, the executive director of Gen Con, David Hoppy. But and you can look at it in the <laughs> past. But it is August one through four in Indianapolis. Uh, best four days in gaming. I've been there before. Did you guys know that? I've been to Gen well, we've Con. Heard that you've been I to have. Gen Con. It's been amazing. Did you get like a t-shirt or anything? I did. Wow. I did. I got one for Paul. Did. I didn't get one for you. Sorry. Yeah. 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 Well, you need to give him 40 bucks. bucks. But uh, <laughs> badge registration is open right now, and make sure you get it now because it will go away. They will sell out because they've had they've done that before in the past. Oh, They'll yeah. sell out right away. Uh, but get your tickets. Go online. Alaska actually has direct flights going out there, so. Try to uh, really? go to Alaska. Right, right to the con? From Everett? From, not from Everett. Wow. Boo. From, from SeaTac <laughs> to Indianapolis. Drop you off right on the roof? Yes. Okay. That's what they do. That's cool. Parachute out. That's, that's right. Cool. And it's not actually a 747. It's actually a, a dragon. It's a red dragon. Wow. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, true story. Okay. True story. Well, with that, why don't we go into game news? What do we got? Well, Rebeculous. I have a few mm-hmm. picks here that I did deep, in-depth research on. Uh, a few minutes ago, and looks like there is a Space Invaders board game. Hello, mm. everybody. 40 years of Space Invaders, and I don't even know how old the people are who listen to this, but Space Invaders came out in 1978, so. I'm well, hoping Paul like put, I was Paul, playing. can you put a Space Invader like playing. right here? Well, we'll, we'll try that. Okay, that'd be great. I wasn't yes. playing it on my TV. Or have like them like <laughs> above us coming, coming down. down. Yeah. Back and forth, sure, yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, so that's really all that, that doesn't even expound on that. But mm-hmm. Space Invaders, the board game coming out. So I don't know. That looks great. 40 years. God, that's I'm cool. old. God, we're old. Uh, Star Wars Outer Rim. Apparently this is just a uh, preview of this game. Uh, why does it say sha na 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 How do you say it? Oh. Uh. Get a job, na 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 na. I don't know why they have that under here. Um, the outer rim, get a job. <laughs> oh, can you put a light bulb <laughs> over my head? I don't what know. Is... That's a speculating. <laughs> All right, that was that. Would, you would speculate that. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so uh, so yeah, you're gonna need to get a job, or probably several, if you're gonna go ahead and work in the world of smuggling. In this preview, you get a look at just how that works, as well as what skill tests are like in this game. Paul left. He left. Hopefully, he's coming back. Uh, we have Bunny Kingdom, bunnies and clouds, because cute has no limits. Uh, it's a drafting game. What does that mean? Oh, it's a card game then, huh? That to me. Why is it drafting game? I think it's a card that's, game, right? Oh, he's not gone. I, I'm not gone on that. Is. that. That's when you're in NASCAR and you take your car up really close to the car in front of you. Or when you're to, biking, yes. Yeah. But that's not what that means. It's not? No, I don't that's think so. That's how I play it. I get my, my cards right next to your cards. Well, uh, th- that's probably correct. That sounds more <laughs> correct. Anyway, Bunny Kingdom in the Sky, that's just cute. It's a little expansion of Are something. Are they dead bunnies? Is that why they're in the sky? No, no. They're just in the sky because... They can fly. And Why are they on a chocobo? What's a chocobo? Why Never do you know mind. all these you words? Guys are terrible God, nerds. your grammar. Uh, <laughs> Citizens Prohibition Board Game up on Kickstarter. Uh, it actually looks kind of difficult. Sorry, Citizens Makers. Looks kind of cool, but look at that. Look at these boards. Oh, yeah. Kind of, kind That's of, a lots of pieces. There. Lots of. Yeah. Anyway, but uh. it's Prohibition, and I am not even into that, although I'm drinking coffee. Yes. Oh, speaking of which, let's Stump take a town, moment. Stump sure. Town. Nitro, Nitro. Cold brew. Cold brew because I'm so tired. That's the only reason. I will drink beer later on. Don't worry. Well, I am drinking a Fort George Cavatica Stout. It's one of my favorites. Isn't that to do with a spider? It's all spidery. Oh, so, no. spiders. I forgot what what did you drink Is this, this post, post-doc? Is that what post-doc it is? Post-doc cram, post-doc cram, cram session. session. That's yes. right. It's got beer and coffee, a porter and coffee. Nice. Nice. Yes. Yeah. Nice. Excellent choice. All right. So let's see here. Hold on. A couple mm-hmm. more. Uh, Star Wars Outer Rim. Okay, that's tabletop games. In mm-hmm. Kickstarter, we have Sea King's Malice, a fifth edition adventure in deadly depths. Oh, notes. And uh, I don't really know what this means, but it's available for OE Swords and Wizardry System for those mm-hmm. who like the old school rules. Look at you me. must know mm-hmm. what that's about. I don't, sure. You're too close. It's that's uncomfortable. We're a microphone. It's uncomfortable. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm and away during your segment. Thank you, thank you. And then this isn't a game, but an accessory, which I I thought was kind of cool. There's a new initiative tracker that just looks so involved. 
by tabletop foundations and it's got all these little different parts and non-character players but what does our guy do what? he has little pieces of paper that he just puts over the over mm -hmm. the partition and i thought that was kind of funny because this is the opposite of that hey hi <laughs> so this last game i uh uh saw that looked kind of cute was uh is it called easy profit it's the name doesn't i want to change the name but it looks really cool easy profit uh make finance fun and easy it's a game designed to teach you uh how to make money and it'll teach you apparently skills that can be used in real life oh, wow. and in business boy where was life. this when i was young I and got my first I checkbook know. i thought as, as long as you had checks you well know. we're millions mm -hmm. we're we're millionaires because it's podcast sure we, right. are. sure we are so they mm -hmm. say finance does not have to be boring mm -hmm. it seems super complicated and to be honest difficult blah, blah blah we've made it easy we teach franchise owners how to run their businesses and though the goal is simple, the steps to get there will have plenty of challenges. You'll be required to make tough decisions, possibly take loans, and balance risk and reward. And there's teams. You play against each other, either team of one or team of two, CEO and a CFO. Mm -hmm. And uh, you choose a region of the country for some kind of tax purposes. And it's just kind of cool. And you got cards and you got dice and you got pretty colors. And, and it's real money. And you make lots and lots of money <laughs> if you win this game. Okay. That's All right. Great. That's, that's cool. That's not true. That last part's not true. Um, and they're already met their Kickstarter goal because it just looks awesome. So I guess right. everyone else thinks so too. Cool. And uh, that's it. That's okay. I well, I've got some more. Uh, do you like ponies? Who doesn't? Do you like football? Do you yeah, like football? Right. With ponies. Wow. Well, Pony Bowl Fantasy Football team up on Kickstarter is on right now. So check it out. Pony Bowl Fantasy Football. Um, why not? Right? Uh, also, Soul Wars Forbidden Power for Age of Sigmar available to pre order from Games Workshop. If you love miniatures, soul it's Wars up there. Like souls are your shoes? Like that kind of soul? Do you have diamonds on the soul? Sure, that's shoes? exactly what it is. Oh, it's cool. it's about Nikes and uh, <laughs> Adidas. Uh, Age of Sigmar has a new book available to order. It's called Soul Wars Forbidden Power, and it pushes for the Age of Sigmar lore. Giants. Giant bolts filled with unimaginable power have been revealed. Of course, everyone and their cousin is trying to get into those bolts can I, first. Can I, can I interject real quick? I mean, sure. you're great. And you you have, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm going to kiss it if I'm no, any closer, no, no, for yeah, God's sake. Yeah, yeah. You're, you really, you're just enthusiastic, but I think some of these aren't meant to be read so so happily. Like, it should well, be no. like, soul wars. And just, you know, just so get serious. into it. It's not happy. It's It's a war for your soul, man. Come on. Of course, everyone and their cousin is trying to get into those vaults first. This new book has a little something for everyone, along with the book sets. There's a whole ton of terrain pieces as well. This almost went in today's terrain corner post. That that was on the 20th. I think it's still going, so it's still have plenty of them. But what I really want to talk to, talk about, gang, is, did you hear about the new campaign coming up? Um, yeah. From Wizards. Oh, the Baldur's Gate. Yes, Baldur's Gate <laughs> Descent into Avernus. I am hoping that uh, we play it. I oh, uh, yes. whether I don't know who's oh, going to be yes. DMing it. I think Steve and I. Uh, I think Steve is our DM. You might have seen him once or twice here on the show. I think he should uh, DM. And we do voted Fista with his with his beard. Well, we decided stuff. that you were going to DM it. So Rebeculus is going to be DMing it, so huh. we can play. It's going to be great. Oh. First, oh, we have another, another all campaign of you. Yes. we have to finish, and another one we have to start We do, finish. we do. And Baldur's <laughs> Gate Descendant Avernus is coming out in September. Make sure you go to your game store to order it, where you can get an alternate cover. You can also get digitally uh, with D&D and Beyond. It's available right now. Uh, so check that out. Uh, so it's so coming is that out like September. a necessarily evil campaign? Like, would your characters... Is that, oh, you're is going that to hell. thing where you You're could, going to hell. Well, you're going to the first that. level of hell. I actually listened to the YouTube, yeah. which I never do. And does that mean that your characters like you wouldn't be a lawful good would you going down there would you can be any alignment you're just kind of going down there and Aren't you know you just i'm gonna get killed kind of right away in the earlier levels because we'll you're well you're there, there. you know not really no no, no they wouldn't you're design hiding, it that way you're just hiding all the time? no yeah. no you're, you're role playing but you we'll find you out. might have to deal with zariel all right zar zariel zariel sure. that's right she's the ruler of avernus the first level of hell which by the way you kind of look like her Thank you. you. Do. And in <laughs> fact, you. if you do think, I think you meant that as if an you insult, think that she I, looks like um, her, make sure to um, email us at geeksofcascadia at gmail.com or Facebook us at Geeks of Cascadia or um, this is where you thing? come in. Instagram. Stand in front of a, a mirror in a darkened room with a lit candle and say, Geeks of Cascadia, three times slowly, then blow the candle out. We'll, we'll be right behind you. 
that's or Twitter at Geeks of Cascadia. So should so, we go into our? Oh, go ahead. Yeah, um, and so if you want to hear our review of this this, this module, check back with us in six years. <laughs> yes, because yeah, that's <laughs> about but, right. Anyway, let's go into the review of what is that plant thing? Or, or do you, do you want to do the? Uh, actually, we should probably go Steve Jackson. This is Steve first. Jackson. Okay, sure. probably should. He's been waiting. He has been. Sorry, yes. Steve. Sorry, Steve. Let's listen to what he has to say right about now. Yes. Hey Geeks, this is Greg Pratt for Geeks of Cascadia, um, and I am here with the one, the only, the amazing and world-renowned, I hope, Steve Jackson of Steve Jackson Games. Hello. So, Steve, so we're here at FNORDCON. Um, this is FNORDCON 1. So we're going to have a 2, I hope? I hope. Okay. Certainly, uh, the reactions have been good. I, I kind of enjoyed it myself, although I camped out at the car wars tables for the most <laughs> of the weekend, but being me who I am. so. So what's new and what's going on that uh, people would love to know about, the cool stuff that you've got coming and going? Well, Car Wars is the biggie. We're finally getting the new edition out. To oh, the yeah. The Kickstarter will be later this year, and it'll ship oh, in 2020. It, it will be this year and ship yes. in 2020? Okay. Yes. First time I've heard those words. Okay. Mm -hmm. that's, don't tell Phil you said that? <laughs> no, it's okay. It's, uh, okay. That's, that's what's supposed to happen. Beautiful. Okay. We have a rule system now that we really like. Now we're just... I played it. It was pretty good, I thought. We're just polishing the expression of the rules. Yeah, so, I think they're so, the tweaking the, the equipment here and there and stuff, that sort of stuff. Yeah. And, okay. It, so how involved in that have you been, or just a little uh, bit? Playing. Playtesting. Play oh, you yeah. have to play one for once. Yes. Uh, the designers are Randy Schooneman and... <laughs> Uh, Sam Mitchkey. Pretty cool. But what about you? I know they. You know some of these folks are doing other projects so that you can work on some of your own stuff. And I, you want to tell some folks about some of the cool stuff you've been doing? I'm working a lot on the Fantasy Trip reissue right now. Or that I, was that was your first game way from way back. That, yes. That well, Ogre was my oh, first. Sorry, first, game. It first, was first my role, first role playing, playing game. game. Okay. But uh, yeah, that's, that's uh, forty two years. Was it seventy seven? Uh, first. First bits of it came out in '77. Okay, yeah. so 42. Wow, you've yeah. been a, you, you're one of the I guess been around the industry probably the longest of most of the, the heads of the companies. I just trying uh, to think if there's anybody before you. Rick Loomis certainly before me. Luzaki, okay. uh, but only a but couple. I'm, I'm getting up there. <laughs> and still getting up every day and loving your job. I hope. Yes. Well, I don't love love getting up every day. Well, but, okay, but, but I think most of us could. Agree once I sit that. down at the computer, it starts to be fun. Okay, that's pretty cool. So, so I mean, what, what's what's some of the you know, what, what are some of the great questions you've been asked over the years that you love to answer and stuff? I, you know, I thought I'd better ask you. You can, oh. you can probably get some weird ones, but what are the ones you really enjoy trying to tell answer and tell people about? Uh, what do I want to drink? <laughs> what do you want to drink? Okay, and uh, okay, I understand. After your pork rise, you like okay. those. So, uh, what do you like to drink? Uh, Brandy Alexander. Brandy Alexander, okay. Sadly, we're not in a bar, so we can't Oh, I would, I would, would have gotten you one. Life is cruel. And I'm, assume, I'm assuming food's in here somewhere, too, on your top of your list. Food is good. Food is good? Food okay. is good. Without it, games do not happen. This is there's, true. There's falling over and dying. Food, food and caffeine is the other one a lot of folks go more, for. More seriously, people ask what's next for Ogre, and we're going to do that's another Battlefield set. Second Battlefields? Mm -hmm. Okay. More, more maps. Okay, that's an addition to the Battlefield set that, that was just kick-started. Which just kick-started and is uh, already at print, I think. Okay. So it's, it's coming along. Okay, and so what are the, what I got? I got Andrew to talk about Munchkin. So Good. yeah, oh, it's which is still the, the one of your the biggest top seller of the company. That's the biggest seller we've ever had thus far. Okay. Yes. Thus far, we want something to beat it eventually, right? Wouldn't, wouldn't that be something? We'd love you love you to have a couple of equivalents. Maybe the new Car Wars. Oh, we'll uh, see on that. So. Okay. so Upcoming conventions and stuff. You're going to be visiting up the Pacific Northwest anytime soon. No plans for the Pacific uh, Northwest, sadly. I sadly. like visiting there, but nothing is on the list. Uh, I am going to be in Dublin this summer. I'm Dublin. Uh, yes, I'm a guest of honor at the World Science Fiction Convention. And that's that's a bit of an honor. Is we haven't had any game designers there. there. Haven't been any game designers on that list before that. So that's that's, that's quite an honor. That's real big for the, it is an and, honor, and it's big also for the hobby in the hobby industry as well. Acknowledging how much how involved with a lot of that yes. we are. And there's now a Nebula Award for game writing. So oh, I hadn't heard yeah. that. Yes. Wow. And so, okay. 
and they're mainly thinking about things like dialogue for computer games. But we'll see what happens. It could be could be board, an interesting board game, okay, or yeah. role playing. Very cool. And anything, anything else? I don't want to hold you up too long because I know we have a uh, the ogre players are just itching to take you down here yes, at the Nordcon. We've got a three o'clock ogre game set up. <laughs> how, how you think uh, you get a fair on that? I'll win most of them, but I won't win all of them. So is it okay? So okay, I'm saying something. There's some good poker players out there. Yeah, so I know a couple of the people at least who are you who got tickets for that are good players. Oh so, boy, uh, it'll be fun. I, I entered the drawing myself. I'm only a mediocre old poker player, but did you I, get one of the tickets? Are you in? I I, I did win a, a door prize, the conspiracy theory, which I haven't ah, played yet. Okay, I have to take a look at that. Okay. So that's going home and. And uh, by the way, Nordcon has, Nordcon has some great s swag, by the way, too. Yeah. Thank you. I, I have to say that. Uh, it, it helps to be the game publisher. You, you, there's, <laughs> there is swag. Oh, yes. One of those sets is going to my son when I get home. And, and a Munchkin set, the X-Men. He's, cool. he's a superhero and a Munchkin fan. So okay. that, that's that's so going to be a winner in his that, book. That will be uh, so. right in the center of the dark. Any, any last words you want to throw out there? or? Yeah. That you kind of covered the waterfront so, there. Just any, thank you for any, listening, people. Any, any encouragement for would-be game designers, maybe to throw at the end? No, nothing really. Go, go design games. Don't listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank what you. are you doing listening to a podcast when and, you could and, be scribbling and, notes? I will ask one last thing. Yeah. So, what, what did you think of the Geeks of Cascadia's um, Death by Death? coverage of the Car Wars tournaments. We know you commented on it at one point. Oh, I think that's the best title for a podcast ever. So, uh, <laughs> okay. But I enjoyed listening. Well, it's greatly appreciated. Okay. Well, thank you very much for taking the time, Steve. Uh, and once again, it's Greg, Greg Prepper, Geeks of Cascadia, and Steve Jackson. Thank you very much. Awesome. Wow, that was great. Uh, th thanks again, Greg, for being out in the field, getting the Steve Jackson interview. So totally cool. They yes. did that in the field? In the field. It seemed like it That's was right. indoors yeah, it somewhere. Was like, it was like um, um, the hills are alive, oh. sound of Steve Jackson. <laughs> That's cute. You're going to put a little... Sure, okay. yeah. I will sure. well put a thing. Right. <laughs> right. Well, that was a great interview, and Thanks. thank you, Steve Jackson, for um, thank you, Steve talking Jackson. to us. And we had a great time playing your Car Wars. And I guess there'll be a new edition coming out. I don't know when. Yeah, there's one coming out. Yeah. Yeah. Soon, soon. Good. Uh, Good. Speaking Wars. of Car Wars. Yes. Game of Thrones seasons eight. Season eight stinks. No, it wow. doesn't. It's, just, it's, like, it's boring. No, it doesn't. What? But I know Why? everyone's going to agree with you. They in. They just didn't have a Wait boat a to go by. castle high. fell on them. That's what? you're being a little what about too episode, harsh. What, what about episode hater? three, the big fight with the, the White Walkers? Oh, that was okay. What you could see. You're just a hater. You tried writing. It was, a, writing it was and just not very directing. interesting. What about the big fight at King's Landing? Where How about Daenerys in the went last crazy? Episode, oh, by the way, spoiler. Sorry. Spoiler. Spoilers. Sorry. How about in the last episode, Arya has killed Jaime Lannister, takes his face, and then stabs Cersei? Did Wouldn't you? That be great. Are you saying what you want to see? Wouldn't that be more interesting than oh, oh a castle fell on them? And Wait. Then, and so Arya she would have Jaime's face, yes. yet she'd still be the same. Height? No, she, her, so her, she, size, her size changes. So she it's wears like stilts magic. or something? It's magic. Yes, she's wearing it's like, stilts. <laughs> Just like Barbie. I'm Jamie Lannister. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's just terrible. Yeah, it I is. know. I'm sorry. It, it could have been more interesting, is what I'm saying. It could have been more interesting. I don't think I hate it. You're I don't very, hate it. I mean, very venomous I, about it. Yeah, hate it's, it's a very good season. television show. It's supposed to be a Greek tragedy. Yeah, man. Okay. Everything's sad. Or maybe you could end happy. What's wrong with that? I'm getting old. I like happy things now. Who's gonna be Drogon's friend now? Drogon has no He's friends. He's all by himself. Mm -hmm. And um, Bran. That's just Bran's sad. gonna be king. Mm. Oh, I have to go now. He is the most irritating <laughs> part of the whole thing. What's the point? What's the point of all the three-eyed crows? Do you think, do you think Drogon him? ate Daenerys? Delicious, delicious. Yeah, Daenerys. He carried her body off to Valeria. That little island off of the land. I think he made her into a shish kebab and ate her. Maybe. Sure. That is maudlin. <laughs> is that what you would do when your mother passes on? Well, I mean, she's really not their mother. There's not much mother. meat. There's not much meat dog. I mean, yeah. genetically, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, oh, well we should Donner go on to the party game party review. What, what what do we got for the game oh, review? Oh, I don't know. Tell it's us what it's called. Um, it's... <laughs> it starts with a T. 
Yeah, go top, ahead. Top, top, I... Chep, uh, it's uh, time. I'm putting on my top hat. He can't say it, so we're it's making topiary. him say it. Oh, you let him off the hook. Thank yeah. you very much, Paul. <laughs> and you have Rebeculous. learned a new word today. Mm. I'm going to well, give you a topiary for your 50th. <laughs> well, with that, let's listen to the review. Yes. Hey geeks, welcome to another tabletop game review. I'm Kelly and this is Doug and today we're doing Topiary. Topiary, yes. Topiary uh, from Renegade Games and Fever Games um, is a really nice game for tile placement similar to uh, Carcassonne is a tile placement game. Uh, yes. But this is, this is a little bit different. Um, so we're going to be placing these Topiary tiles and we'll zoom in a little bit. You can see my tiles, I'm not going to show Kelly. Um, but, but we're going to have we're... visitors visiting this topiary garden, and we're going to have... Oh, I have it over here. No, that's not what I meant. We're going to have them... You started with the wrong thing. What? Game designer and everything. No, I, I'm, I was going to get to that. All right. We're building a park. We're... Building shapes in a park so that people can see them. Kind of, yeah. We're having visitors to this topiary garden kind of discover what they're seeing. Yes. Uh, it's kind of like Fog of War. <laughs> In any okay. games that you played with Fog of War. Because <laughs> you, you don't know what's there until you look. So, yeah. Anyway, we'll zoom in and show you how to play later. So this was pretty much designed and illustrated, illustrated and by Danny Divine. Divine. Yeah. Divine. Danny yeah. Divine took it, took it all the way. So it's for ages 10 and up, and it plays 2 to 4 players. Uh, and it takes about 15 to 30 minutes, uh, which is about right for this game. And it's a quick little game, uh, but you can also very much be chess-like in overanalyze everything. Oh yeah, definitely. You can do that with any game. Well, you can, Even but this chess. this is another one of those games that has a very easy, like, you can just play the game and have fun, or if you feel like being how mean to all of your friends and yeah, possibly not having them anymore. Well, yeah, there's, <laughs> how can you mess over other people and benefit yourself, but also worrying about how people can mess you up and oh, very definitely. gain their own benefits, yeah. Whoever throws the first blow usually loses. <laughs> yeah. So we've got it set up kind of for a two-player game down here. Um, so we're going to zoom in and come back to that. All right. So we've got it set up. Uh, there's a little bit of special rules for the game that for a two- and three-player game, you have to remove uh, one type of topiary, all, all five pieces of them, out of the mix. I'm going to set these out so we can explain what we're doing. So you can see um, them without revealing the game. Yeah. So we've got it set up. It's a 5x5. Five five. The center one uh, is face up. And starting with the first player, which I'll be the first player, we take one of our little visitors and we put them down one of the different sight lines, as they call it, uh, in this topiary garden. Different sight lines, which I have my handy-dandy measuring stick to show you, is anything up and down, left and right, and diagonal. Boom, 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 boom. And so what you're trying to do is you want each of your visitors to view uh, topiaries kind of in growing size, going from smallest to largest. Because if I'm looking this way... You can see them all. I can see all of them, and they're, they're really nice. If I'm looking this way, I can only see this one because it's so large, it's blocking the rest. So I'm going to place one of my visitors. So... As you're placing them, you're going to get points uh, at the end of the game for things like being able to see things in size. So if like these are switched, you would see one, two, four, and five. You wouldn't see three. You would then get points uh, for each type of the same that you get. You would get an extra point for all of these being dinosaurs. So Doug is placed here, and he's got a three. I can then place, I should probably look at my hand. I'm going to place on the diagonal here, and I'm just going to be rude. <gasps> no! And place there. And this tile that we pick up actually goes back into our hand. And you would then have four in your hand, and you have to put one back down. So you draw one, have four, and put one back down. And it has to be it has in to the sideline side line, yeah. of the guy you just placed. So if Doug were to place another one over here, he can't take this tile out. Also, you can't place a meeple anywhere somebody already has a sight line. So, Doug so I can't can... place it looking this way. Because I already have a sight line. Yeah. That's why the diagonals are there. So when you're playing with four players, 
it's, you have room. You end up yeah. using these tiny little twos. It's insane. Do I want to place there? Do you want to place there? No, I don't. I'll place... No, that is... Uh, yeah, I'll place there. Um, let's draw from right here. Yeah. That'll be good. That's pretty cool. And so basically, this is the game. You're drawing a plating until you've placed all of your visitors. Two players use all eight of yours. I think three players use six. And then four players use five. I could be wrong. And but yeah, it's, it's different based on the number of players that you have, because it's going to get crowded. <clears throat> I'm going to go here. On this cool sideline. Oh, we'll go here, actually. Yeah, no. I'm going to put that guy there. So if we were to score right now, like let's say this is the end of the game, you'd get one, or I would get four, plus five is nine, plus two, because these two match, would be 11. Yeah. And there are some bonus points uh, at the end of the game for tiles in your hand. Um, as long as you can see a topiary that's larger than what's in your hand, you will gain those points. Or you gain one point. No, no you gain those points. So long as you can see a topiary of then. something in your hand, you get the points. No, it has to be larger than this number. We're going to look it up. Hold on. <laughs> For each tile, score points equal to the face value as long as a larger sculpture of that type is visible to at least one of your visitors. So, so yeah, you have to see a topiary that's larger than what's in your hand to score those points. I get two. I get one. <laughs> yeah. So. But this ends up going here. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that's the game. Um, uh, I think tiebreaker is whoever went last. Who went la later in turn order. Yeah, because yeah. they have... Whoever went last. Yeah. There is also a drafting variant for this uh, that we'll talk about whenever we come back with our final thoughts. Uh, so, we're back. <laughs> um, You're okay with that placement? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, Doug was rearranging the camera. I took his turn for him. Yeah, it was it was a pretty good turn. <laughs> so thoughts on the game? Uh, it's definitely different. Uh, you can play it with a range of people that you want to play with. You don't have to play it with your gamer group. Mm. I can definitely teach it to anybody off the top. Uh, they don't have to be indoctrinated into how to play games or special languages or anything like that uh, to play it. Yeah, it's counting. It's very, very simple. Oh, and the math makes it great for young kids. Yeah. Um, I like the game. I like the all the little artwork on all the cards, which is really good. And the cards are actually really nice. Uh, yeah, they're pretty board, good. So. Yeah, good tiles. Yeah. And the meeples that you have are all different shapes. This dude's got a ball cap. Yeah. And this person has... Um, I'd say a fro. Braids in their hair. Or braids, yeah. I think that's what it is. Um, this one kind of has the... Is it Peggy Sue? I don't know. It's got a got got a haircut on it, and we have... This guy in a wheelchair. A person in a wheelchair. So even if you're colorblind or anything like that, all of them have different shapes. So you can tell them apart. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, quick little game. So that's always good. What do you like best about it, Doug? Um, I like the, the hidden aspect of it, because you don't know... It's that uh, memory tile placement thing. Well, it's not memory tile, because you place it, you pick one, and you have that one to choose from, which I do not want to play that one. <laughs> is that where you wanted to go, or is that just where you ended up picking? That's, that's just where I ended up picking. <laughs> Actually, I'm... I don't know, we moved things around. Okay. But yeah, and then... Because I have a bunch of ones. You were there. No, I wasn't. No, you I were, couldn't have been there. You were there. I was there, yeah. <laughs> but you decided to go there? Four right you want right to go there. here instead? I can't go there because you're right here. No, I'm not. See, Nobody's right here. No, you are right there. Nobody is here. Why do I have or four pieces on the board and you have three? See? <laughs> this, is, this is what we get into. 
Um, <laughs> so yeah, sight lines are fun. Yeah. Uh, but you get towards the end of it, and all the pieces are out here, and you're like, all right, who doesn't have? I want this piece. How do I get to it? And it's this diagonal is looking pretty good. Yeah, it is. You sure you don't um, want to? You sure you want to go there instead of there? Yeah, I'm fine. Um, but yeah, it's yeah. a really quick, simple game, just for you for your non-gamer friends of two. Uh, something you could play at like Thanksgiving or a and it's family quick. get together. It's it's really quick setup. You just toss the tiles out there and you're done in maybe twenty minutes, thirty if you're learning how to play. Um, but it's it's very quick, very easy to do. Yeah. So we've got a few more uh, family games, kind of family kid games uh, in the queue for what we're reviewing. Um, but if you got a recommendation for a game you want us to review, send us a line uh, on Twitter at Geeks of Cascadia or send us an email at geeksofcascadia at gmail.com. Uh, thanks for tuning in. See you next time. That was awesome. Now do you know what a topiary is? Yes. And Greg and or Kelly did a great job. Yes. Yeah, they did. Greg. Thank you. Because we can't do that. No, we're terrible at it. Yeah. I think we could do it. I think we should do a game. Uh, Doug, Doug and Kelly, like, they know the mechanics yes. and, and they can like, say I stuff can and like, we're like, like we, we can just make it up. We don't, we don't know. We they do know. Like Uno mm. or War. I could review that game. I want to do Dungeon, uh, was it Dungeon Mayhem? I'd love to do that. Sure. Yeah. That'd be fun. And we yeah. can do these RPG games. In fact, we'll, we will do Waterdeep when we, when we finish it. In fact, tonight is D&D night. It is. Right here around the table. Yes. yes Thank you, Tim, for allowing us to use your back room. Thanks, exactly. Tim. Yes. Anything so, else? Any words um, of wisdom? Yeah. Um, roll high. Make sure your bard inspires you. <laughs> I got brand. I, I, I bought a, a, a 20 set um, D8 dice set for inspiring you guys. Good night, nurse. Wait, Was that really? Necessary? Are you serious? Well, they don't sell them in, in sets of three. Wait, so, you actually. It was nine dollars. <laughs> yeah, but you already have dice. I'm not gonna giving you my good dice. I bought cheap dice. Wow. I mean, I love you. I want wow. to inspire you. You I know, you're, give you my good like dice. you're falling. Really? You're falling into that trap that D and D players go into, where they start buying more and more dice. You know, I, I, I don't but even. I don't even dice bring all fun. my dice. I think <laughs> we, we sh- don't have children. We are dual income, no kids. We're gonna buy dice, That's baby. Right. Not we. That's no. not what this. Yeah, no, that's not our relationship. No. So, <laughs> from cigarettes <laughs> to dice. Oh, cigarettes are like ten dollars a pack. There you go. I just spent nine dollars on really? dice. Oh yeah. We that's should have we should have a conversation maybe later future episode about uh, dice addiction. Sure, we should do that. We have all kinds of things. Yeah. We should definitely <laughs> do that. Well, that's for a future episode though. And about people who roll out the ones and twos. Oh, something. by the by the way, do we gotta do like a shout out to anyone that's been emailing us, or maybe perhaps a correction on a past oh, yes. episode? Oh, correction. So, Alex yeah. from Queer Geek, I'm very sorry. Your name is Eric. Sorry, and you're saying it wrong. Sorry, I Eric. I don't know why. <laughs> we just Eric. messed it up. How do we screw that up? I don't know. We're God, do I, so, do I have to apologize? So was I involved in that? Dumb. I don't think I, I was. I no, I, I I would have used your real name, Eric. I'm sorry. That they did that. We're terrible people. <laughs> we are. Anyway, we should wrap this up. We should. My pizza's done in eight minutes. All right. So with that, embrace the nerd, and I hope you make that saving throw. Oh.